At this point in the semester, we've reached the point where we're going to start looking at various types of inference. Now, the inference that we do will depend upon what type of data was collected. So the first type of inference we're going to look at is a t-test, which is going to be used to compare the means of two populations. Now, first off, if we're going to talk about comparing the means of populations, mean implies that you've averaged data values, which is going to mean that we're going to need some type of interval ratio data set data. Now, again, you want to compare this from two populations, and we're going to look first to do independent samples. Independent samples implies that the selection of one object for the first sample has no effect on the selection of one object for the second sample. So the data that was given in the Chapter 5 notes was breast cancer treatment data that's been posted on StatCrunch, and it was the survival time from a randomized study of 98 metastatic breast cancer patients. Now, the purpose of doing this study was to compare two different treatments in terms of their survival time. The first treatment was a standard treatment for breast cancer patients, while the second treatment was an experimental treatment. The question that we want to address is, is there any difference in the mean survival time for patients given the two types of treatments? So if you think about each patient that was included in this data set, they actually had two variables that were recorded for them. The first variable was the type of treatment given. Now in this case, that variable is a nominal variable. It just serves the purpose of busting you into categories, and there's no order in the categories. And the second variable that was recorded was survival time, so how many years they survived. And this variable was an interval ratio variable. Now, to fit with the definitions that are given in Chapter 5, type of treatment is your independent variable. That's what forms the two groups we want to compare. While survival time is your dependent variable, that's the variable that we want to compare across those two groups. Now, if you think about it this way, what you're hypothesizing is that survival time depends on what kind of treatment you've got, which is why survival time gets the name of dependent variable. Now, in order to look at this data set, we need to open it up in StatCrunch and see what type of measurements we've got. So if we look at our data set in StatCrunch, you'll see that you've got two columns, treatment one and treatment two. So as you go through the example, the first thing that we considered looking at was various summary statistics. So we wanted to summarize our columns, treatment one and treatment two. So if we select both of these columns, you get the summary statistics that are posted in the notes. Now, if you look at the sample means, we see the sample mean for treatment one was 2.938, while the sample mean for treatment two was 2.20. Now, here's a really fine point, and actually the purpose of why we're gonna do this inference. The conclusion that I'd like to be able to make is that the survival times are different for the two treatments for the entire population of people who suffer from this type of breast cancer. Currently, I'm only looking at samples of 49 women in each treatment. That's definitely not the population of all women suffering from this disease. So what I'd like to be able to do is, I would like to use these sample means, so 2.9 and 2.2, and use the variability that's in that data to see if I can conclude that there actually is evidence of a difference in the two mean survival times. Now, in order to do that, we're going to walk through the steps of the hypothesis test. So you'll notice in the notes that I walked you through all those steps. So the first thing we're going to do is state hypotheses we're going to test. Now, the researcher is looking for evidence of a difference in the mean survival time. Telling me you want to find evidence of a difference implies that this is going to be your alternative hypothesis. So this is the research hypothesis that we want to find support for. Conversely, your null hypothesis is going to state that there is no difference. And when we state hypotheses, you'll notice that the null hypothesis primarily will always say that there's no difference between groups, treatments, whatever we happen to be looking at. Um, in the notes, we went through and set the significance, le significance level of the test, and in this case, we were going to use a significance level of 0 0.01. Now, the purpose of this significance level is to control against errors. So, by setting our error rate at 0 0.01, we're trying to control against a type 1 error that occurs. 
Now, the next step say you need to take a random sample of data. So we have our two columns of data that are collected. And then we need to calculate a test statistic. Now, a test statistic at its core in your previous stat class was probably where the formula came into play with lots of calculation. In this class, though, our focus is going to be much more on interpreting results as opposed to grinding out calculations. So our test statistic and our p-value both are going to come from StatCrunch output. Now, the goal of your test statistic is to take these two sample means and standardize those somehow. So I want to know how different are those two sample means relative to how spread out your data was. Now, to do this, all of our inference procedures are going to be under the stat menu. We're using a t-test, so it makes sense to go to the t-statistics. And we have two different samples that are taken. And those samples were taken with data, because we actually have the responses recorded in our StatCrunch data set. So in your window that pops up, you have to select what your two samples are. So we'll say that sample one was treatment one, sample two was treatment two. And you'll notice by default that pool variances is checked. So one of the things in the notes that was pointed out was that an assumption for the t-test is that you have to assume equal variances. By checking the pool variance box, you're making the assumption that your variances are indeed the same. So if we click Next, here's where you have your choice between a hypothesis test and a confidence interval. Now, more details about the confidence interval will be posted later this week. For our purposes now, we are going to consider a hypothesis test. So you'll notice that your null mean difference is zero. Now, what that's implying is there's no difference in the survival times between treatment one and treatment two. And our alternative is not equal to zero. That's going to say that there is some type of a difference. Now, you'll notice in your pull down for alternative that you have three choices, less than, greater than, and not equal to. In this case, a less than hypothesis would imply that treatment one survival times were less than treatment two, while a greater than hypothesis would imply that treatment one's survival times were greater than treatment two's. Now, if you go back to what our research objective was, the goal was to determine if there's a difference in the two means, hence we're going to select the not equal to alternative. If you click calculate, you'll get the results that appear in your notes. So in your notes, you'll notice that there were several things highlighted. The important components for us are your t-stat, because that's going to be the value of your test statistic, and your p-value, which is the probability associated with that test statistic, and that's the probability that lets us come to some type of a conclusion. Now, the last thing that we have to worry about is we need to make some type of a decision in our test and interpret our results. And if you read through the notes, you'll see that the decisions are made by comparing your p-value, so in our case, 0 0.0827, to our significance level, which we set at 0.01. Because our p-value is greater than our significance level, that says that this probability of 0 0.08 isn't to the unusual point. It has to be less than 0.01 before I'm going to say, you know what, those sample means were too far apart. I have unusual data relative to the claim of equal population means. So since our p-value is large, the decision that we're going to come to is that we fail to reject our null hypothesis. So the conclusion that we made was that there's no statistical evidence of a difference in the mean survival times for metastatic breast cancer patients given the two types of treatments. Now, what you'll see in the notes is that there are practice problems that are posted. And for your practice problems, you want to mimic the report that I've posted concerning this data set. So you'll notice it asks for graphical displays, which you've had some practice with, um, summary statistics, which you've had some practice with, and now we're tacking on this extra component of, once you've described your sample, what generalizations can you make from that data that you've collected? So as always, let me know if you have any questions on the material. There'll be additional notes that go up this week, um, and I hope that things are going well.